right. Thank you guys for coming. Um, I, I've been I've been kind of thinking about this this particular webinar for a little while now, and I've had a few things that that have held me back in getting it ready to go. But there has been so much information come out. There's so much stuff that's happening. You know, and I, I titled this 21 Tips for 2021, and I really had a hard time uh, uh, coming uh, up with 21 tips. Not because I couldn't find 21 things, because I had a hard time refining it down to just 21 things and not keep you guys here for three hours this afternoon while I go through it, because there is so much that has happened. There is so much that has changed in this marketing world and this crazy world of business that we, we are all existing in. So this, uh, this webinar is to give you is designed to give you some ideas, uh, some things you need to be thinking about from the way you do business, uh, to give you some tips on different, um, different social media platforms, different marketing platforms and things that you can be thinking about and then, and then work toward implementing those. So you may have to even pick and choose the ones that are best for you because, you know, like I said, I'm going to give you a lot of information today. Um, there will be a replay available. I will post that and let you uh, have that replay available. Uh, and you feel free if any uh, that this should assuming that the Facebook live streams properly, it should also be on Facebook and then that can be shared. So feel free to share that with anyone that you might run into. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we're going to get started. And as I said, I titled it 21 digital marketing tips for 2021. Um, coming up with 21 was not hard to do. Believe me, I have about 18, I have about eight pages of notes uh, of different topics that, that I wanted to cover. And I have to sort of go through and weed out the ones that I thought were the, the most appropriate and the best for, uh, this topic. But I really want to think about, let's, let's think about 2021 as a, um, uh, for a moment, because think about, think about your business, your lives this time last year. And how many of you had ever heard of Zoom at this time last year? I, I had because I had been using it for four or five years. But, you know, I, again, uh, so many people had never heard of it, never used it before, didn't even know what it was until. And now, you know, it's a common it, it's, you know, when we search for something, we Google it. When we're going to do an online, uh, when we're going to do an online um, a webinar or some kind of online communication, we're going to zoom it, right? So it's become a commonly accepted uh, verb, right? So nobody knew anything about that before. How many of you thought that uh, 14 days to flatten the curve meant that we would be back in business as usual by summertime at the latest, <laughs> right? Nobody, you know, nobody, nobody had, any thought that we would be really thought that we would be still masks and still limiting our, uh, still limiting our time, uh, you know, and, uh, or limiting the, the seating capacities in restaurants and, you know, and so many things have been affected and cut, cut back and even our own businesses. So, you know, again, that's just one of those things. And then how many of you thought that, uh, you know, working from home, even of those, those of us that work from home would realize that, that meant for everything. that meant for our networking that meant for our marketing that went for our customer service aspects so we have you know we have moved into a whole new world and as such the things that we the marketing um, that we have done in the past uh, has become less effective and we have to shift our thinking we have to do some things differently and that's really what this is about. And there's, there's been so many things come about uh, in the past, in the past uh, several months with, with uh, the, so, some of the social media sites, some of the, uh, the things that are, that are staples of what we've been doing for our marketing. 
So um, if you guys have questions, feel free to pop those in the, uh, in the chat box or in the Q and a box, either one, I'll see the, I'll see a little uh, indicator when you do. So if you have questions, feel free to ask those. You're not going to, uh, you're not, you're not going to distract me from uh, things and I'll try to cover those as best I can. But when you think about 2021, you know, what are your, what social media platforms are you planning on using this year? Uh, do you have a, do you have a customer database and how do you use it? What type of content are you creating and how often? Those are some of the things that we, that we have to really think about and analyze in our marketing strategy. So I'm going to bring up some topics today that you may not understand the terminology, but when I sort of define it, you'll get a better grasp on that. So one of the things that, um, uh, you know, before I actually, one more thing before I get started. Another thing that we're really seeing a trend, and I'll, I'll, I will mention it again later, but I will see a trend of, you know, we've got a new, a whole new, almost a new set of norms from a standpoint of the way we act, the way we communicate, what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. Um, and so it really makes a big difference in the way we have to think about how we engage with our customers, our clients. You know, we're looking for change. I mean, they're looking for people to, to that with social engagement and, you know, but then how do you, how do you walk that fine line of, of uh, appeasing one crowd and, and setting off another. And so it really comes down to knowing your audience and really, really, and I, you guys that have been in webinars with me before, know I talk a lot about knowing your audience and your targets, but it's critical now. I mean, you got to know who you're talking to and almost gear. Uh, if you've got multiple audiences, you almost have to gear multiple channels to talk to those audiences. So the first, the first topic, um, the first one of the trends is multi is omni-channel marketing. Now I know that sounds you know, like what the heck is that? But really what that means is do we use multiple multiple channels to get our marketing message out there as opposed to a single channel? Do we put all our eggs in one basket, if you will? So, you know, for a long time, we could put a lot of emphasis on Facebook and get a decent return. Um, maybe, you know, maybe it was you were putting in, uh, efforts into Instagram or LinkedIn. And so creating those particular channels and, and really focusing on those had uh, was what we were able to do. But again, that sort of changed. Because if you think of, because right now, what we should be looking at is three or more channels. Three or more channels has, uh, when you get to that point, you've got a broader mix. You have more engagement and you have more recognition. But some of the things that bring to point to bring that to point are in the engagement rate. If you have three or more channels that you use let's say you use video marketing you use email and you use facebook or instagram one of the social media platforms um, by having a by having multiple channels your engagement rate goes from uh from five percent to 19 percent. so you have four times more engagement with multiple channels purchase frequency is 250 percent higher than with a single channel 250% higher. So there again, that's, you know, another, another example of why the multiple channels expand that reach and customer retention is 90% higher versus a single channel. <clears throat> so we really have to, we really have to look at the aspect of how do we, uh, how do we arrange our time? How do we spend, share that, you know, how do we figure out a plan to do this? Because you guys are running a business, you know, you have your business to run and you can't, you know, you can't be focused on marketing a hundred percent of the time because you got, you know, you've got operations and you've got, you know, day-to-day -day things that have to be done and customers to take care of. So how do we figure out how to make this work? And, and that's a challenge. And so, you know, we'll, we'll kind of touch that a little later. Video, video has been a top trend for the last several years, but again, this year it is still is, uh, it is still high on that list because again, so many different factors, 70% of consumers share uh, a video from a brand and we're all brands. I mean, I, you know, we may be, 
we may have our single or sole proprietorship, but I'm still a brand. I'm still, you know, uh, I still have my brand. And so that's, that's the idea that, uh, that consumers are, are sharing the things we're putting out there. If it has share worthy, um, worthy status. 72% of businesses say uh, video has improved their conversion rate. So you have, uh, you, you are in, you improve the rate of getting that business and, you know, acquiring that business by 72% significant rate. 52% of consumers say watching product videos makes them more confident in their online purchase decision. So explaining what you do, explaining how, how, what it's like to work with you, explaining your product, explaining your service gives you a 50% better chance of getting that, you know, getting people to commit because they feel more confident in the fact that they know what you do. Nobody likes to ask a stupid question, you know, and, and, and we all think about that. You know, I use the analogy and you guys that have been some of my webinars before have heard the analogy. So forgive me for, for, uh, pulling a, uh, a, a grampy, which is my dad, which is what my kids call my dad, but you know, he would retell the same story over and over again, but, the idea that, that when you go, let's say you go on a used car or on a car lot and, you know, as soon as you step foot on the lot, the, the, somebody comes, you know, blasting through the door going, Hey, how can we help you today? You know, let's put you, what'll it take to put you in this car and get you to drive home in it. And the first thing we do is we go, I'm just looking, right? I mean, that's their standard line because we don't want to be sold. We want to buy. And it's the same thing with your social media platforms, hard sell approaches don't work. Uh, especially when you get into the millennials and the Gen X's and Gen Y's. I mean, those guys are, they're not like, you know, I've done my research and I'm going to do it my way and not, you know, you can't tell me what I need to know. So keep that in mind as you, as you're crafting your, your messages on all your channels. 65% of executives visit a, a website and 39% call a vendor after watching a video. So Again, we're, uh, when you're reaching that professional crowd, the executive crowd, um, they're using video as well. And here's one that I really love. This stat just, you know, it was one that just kind of, kind of knocks you back in your uh, chair a little bit. Sites with video are 50 times more likely to drive organic search results compared to text only. I was talking to a client the other day. And he's been playing around. Some of you may have seen it on, uh, on Facebook, the, uh, the ad for a program called doodly, which is a, uh, it's one of those explainer type video creation tools, you know, that, that hand draws out the, you know, the, the images and all that. And so he actually bought it and he's kind of one of those guys that doesn't want to be on, uh, doesn't want to be on screen, but he wants to, um, but he, you know, he likes the idea of the, of the, you know, of some kind of entertainment factor. So he was talking and he created one to send out for Valentine's day. And he was talking about his website and he said, well, what else do you think we could do? You know, we, we kind of revamped his website. And I said, you've got the program create a doodly for your website. Really? That's a brilliant idea. You know, uh, well, yeah, that's what you pay me for. But that idea of having that video on your website increases the, the time that people spend on your website. It increases the, uh, you know, it increases the, the trust that they have in that Google likes it because now you're keeping people on your website for a longer period of time. And so Google likes that from, from that standpoint. So there are a lot of factors, but having that web, having a video on your website is a, a huge component of, um, of the, the success of, drive, of driving traffic. Live video, live video is still one of the biggest factors when it comes to utilizing any of the, uh, uh, from any of the searches or any of the social media platforms. Uh, live streaming is continuing to grow in popularity. So it gets, it, it just increases every year. Average U.S. consumer will have uh, will have an average of 9.5 video streaming applications installed on their phones. Okay, now think about the average person has probably 80 apps on their phone, 
and 10% of those apps are going to be video streaming. What does that tell you? And live video, the importance of live video is, you know, you kind of jump to the head of the line when it comes to the algorithm on sites like Facebook and uh, um, YouTube, Instagram, the live version is so much more uh, robust and it, and it really, it boosts the algorithm. They, they love that. The, you know, the, the sites like Facebook, for example, they love the fact that I do that. I'm doing this as a live video because of the fact that number one, it keeps people on their platform longer and anything anybody can do that that keeps them on their platform longer, which means they see more ads, which means they increase their revenue, which, you know, in the, the whole effect of that, of that aspect of time spent on page, that's all they want. They want more eyeballs on their sites for longer and video does that. So live video is one of the things that will get you really a boost and get more content seen. If I just post, a, if I were to just take, do this as an article and post it on my website and then share it to Facebook, probably of the however many hundreds of people that are following my page, a handful would see it. Out of for every hundred people that follow your page, three to five people would probably see your content. That's it. But with live, you're going to get a whole lot more visibility. You can also do live on Instagram and LinkedIn. And I'm going to talk about LinkedIn in a few minutes, as well as YouTube. YouTube will uh, offers you a live stream as well. And each one has its advantages. So keep that in mind as you're looking at it. Um, there are some ways that you can do live stream to more than one platform at one time, but it does take a third party software. Um, one of the things that uh, one of the, one of the most popular and that I've played around with a little bit is, is a site called StreamYard, Um, and it will let you live stream to three, I believe three channels. So, and it handles the traffic and everything. So if you're looking to live stream, I, you know, you might, when you really, once you get comfortable with it, it, it does take some, it does take a level of comfort to be able to jump in there to put yourself out there and go, okay, here goes, you know, let's see what happens and how well I do or whether I, you know, whether I sink or swim. So, you know, but you got to just, you got to bite the bullet and do it. It's such an important part. YouTube videos, you know, you, you need a YouTube channel. Uh, if you don't have a YouTube channel, all you need is a Gmail address. Simple as that. You go over to YouTube and while you're logged into Gmail and it'll create a channel for you. And then I would create it as your business name. Personally, that's the way I do it. But um, um, that's how you, that's where you would put your videos. One of the biggest reasons is because it helps get your content indexed in Google. As soon as I create a video and post it in YouTube, um, I, I always put a link back to my website. And when I do, um, it sends Google over there to see what's new on my website. So having that, uh, having that video in YouTube increases Google's visibility of your, your site. So that's one reason. It's easy to embed videos in your website, especially if you've got WordPress, that's a simple process. Uh, you just, they give you an embed code and, and you just simply uh, copy and paste that into the appropriate spot on your website. And I can teach anybody how to do that just in a matter of a few minutes. And it's probably the best source for search engine optimization. Google, believe it or not, Google will read the, uh, will read the transcript. Um, Google will read the transcript of your video and they will pretty much put it up, whatever, you know, what you say. So, uh, you know, which, and that way you can, they, they actually know the stuff that's, um, that you're talking about. Uh, let's see here. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it, I don't know if it, is anyone out. I know someone's having trouble with the connection. I don't know if you guys are, are having any trouble with mine or not. I haven't seen any drop and I'm monitoring it on another computer. So, um, 
hopefully it's uh, you're, you're able to get a connection that squares away. But one of the things that's important with YouTube, uh, and by the way, if you if anybody else is having any instances, uh, pop it in the chat or let me know if you see any problems. Um, one of the things you ought, you need to do is multi-purpose your YouTube channel. So when you um, when you go to YouTube, you want to you want to definitely get the you also want to transcribe the video to text, and there are services that will do that for you. There are some that are free. There are others that, uh, you know, you, they're, they're free for an initial period of time. And then, uh, um, and then you have to pay for them, but they're relatively inexpensive. It look like, you know, pennies per minute type of thing. Um, two of the services that I've used, one of them is Rev and the other one is Descript. But I can take the audio from my video, put it into these services, and do it and it'll give me a printed out transcription of what I said. And then all you have to do is clean it up a little bit and paste that into your, uh, and use that for your blog or use it for, uh, other sites where you might do that. So you want to take your video, you want to publish the blog, the transcript under the video. So paste the video on your website in the blog section and put the transcription underneath it. Some people want to watch it. Some people want to read it. You know, some people want to scan it. So maybe they watch the video and then they go back and scan the transcript. So those are the things that you can, uh, uh, you know, you can do with that. You also can upload the raw video footage to Facebook and to LinkedIn. Um, you never want to, you never want to share a YouTube link on Facebook or on LinkedIn. You're going to get nowhere with it. Don't even bother. The best way to do that is to, uh, the best way to do that is to take the video footage and then upload it separately to Facebook and upload it separately to LinkedIn if it fits in LinkedIn's uh, parameters. And we'll talk about that in a moment as well. And then lastly, you want to, um, you can upload the audio to podcast to a podcast. If you do your videos in in um, in Zoom. Zoom will download the, uh, will give you the, the, the full MP4, uh, which is the full video with, you know, with the audio part, but it'll also give the audio section by itself that you can put into a podcast. And there are podcasting services that are free. Um, and that gives people another way to consume your, your content. And then you can, uh, you can take a video, create a thumbnail for your video and something like Canva and put that in your email and your newsletters and link back to your, to the actual video. So a lot of different ways you can use that. So don't think of a video as just a, a YouTube video because it, it multipurposes very well. Let's talk about LinkedIn a little bit. You know, LinkedIn is one of those, it's one of those old social media platforms that was around forever. I, I was teaching LinkedIn classes back in 2009, uh, 2009, 2010. Um, and LinkedIn was one of the, one of the things that we, we did a lot of, but then we sort of backed away from it because it became a, a hotbed for spam. The value just diminished tremendously. It really went to the toilet. I mean, it just tanked. And, and for that reason, you know, we, a lot of people backed away from it, but they have made some significant changes. And as a result, uh, we're, we're seeing a, a real value now in LinkedIn that we didn't have uh, before. Uh, and there's a lot of things that that's available there. So, but, but there's really have been a, there's been a cultural shift toward conversational transparency. And by that, what we're talking about is, you know, there, think about it, professionals that have been used to an environment or a team, uh, a team setting um, are working remotely and they're missing out on that engaging uh, converse or conversational content between their team. And so they're looking for ways to supplement that. You know, we, we've all had that issue of, you know, geez, if I'm stuck home for one more day, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, somebody's going to, you know, take, 
feel the wrath of me or I'm going to jump off the roof or something. Cause I'm, you know, it drives you crazy. Well, that's really what you, so people are looking for that in their social media channels now is more of a conversational content and engagement with human interaction. One of the, some of the things you can do on LinkedIn to, to uh, encourage that are to create polls uh, that your audience will want to vote on. So you get there, you know, get a, something that, that would create a poll that you can ask people and get their, you know, get their feedback from it. Uh, you can ask irresistible open-ended questions and updates. You want to make sure that the questions you ask are things that will get a conversation started. So keep that in mind from a standpoint of how do you, you know, how do you get that engagement uh, started with some questions? You want to share candid photos from your workday in stories. And we used to think about LinkedIn as being a stuffy, you know, it was the, it was a, uh, you know, a, the, the stuff shirt, you know, very professional. We, you know, we did not vary from our, you know, into our personal life on LinkedIn. Thou shalt not, you know, thou shalt not share anything personal. It's not the, not the case anymore. Now you, you know, it, it really needs to be, have that personal approach <clears throat> and offer those, you know, the kind of the insight into your personality, you know, it's changed our networking behavior. So we've shifted. We also need to shift the focus from collecting connections to building relationships. So if you've got, you know, what, what's the difference? So let's, let's talk about that for a second. If I've got in LinkedIn, I've got a thousand connections that I've, you know, Hey, join my network, you know, that type of thing. Uh, I like to connect. If I've got a thousand connections that just, you know, see my stuff, but really don't engage, or I've got 200 that I have relationships with which would you rather have? Give me the 200 committed relationships all day long. So we have to think about moving from that, that, that number standpoint that says, you know, Oh, look at me, you know, the status symbol, I got 500, I got a thousand, I've got 2000. And, and I'm not to say that that's not a good, you know, not something you would do, but by the same token, you want that core of solid relationships that when they think of you needing services or products that you offer, your name comes to mind first because you've got a relationship with them. Relationships is not transactional. You know, it's not, Hey, how, who can I connect with? So I can then, you know, so I can then sell them something wrong approach. Relationships are, how can I connect with people that I can then do business with? I can send them business. They can send me business. You know, it's mutually beneficial for both of us. It kind of forces professional and brands to speak up and share their values too. That's another thing that we're going to see a lot more of is the, is the, that need to be able to, you know, to share, you know, more of, um, more than just, you know, your, what your business does. It's, it's more an idea of your values and, and where you stand. And then people want to connect with people who can help them learn and grow again, not transactional, but who they want to connect with people that help them learn something that grow in their business that they, you know, that they can find value in that relationship. So that's one of the things that LinkedIn has really done. That's, that's the, the direction that they're moving. LinkedIn videos, you know, I've already talked about the idea of native video, which means by native video, that means you uploaded the video directly to LinkedIn, or you uploaded it directly to Facebook or Instagram or whatever. So a native video means you uploaded it directly to the, um, to the service. And that really, it's really important for LinkedIn as, as it is for Facebook, because they give, 
native video uploaded directly to them far better, uh, far better recognition than just a YouTube link. So your shot, your, your content's going to show up to more people with a native video. Now there are some restrictions in LinkedIn with videos. Number one, you can't do more than 10 minutes. And that really bums me out because I can't do anything in 10 minutes. I mean, <laughs> If you guys that have been on webinars with me before, you know, I can't do anything in 10 minutes, but so I really have to cut down and be, you know, be cog, uh, conscious when I'm doing a video that's going to go toward LinkedIn. I either have to know that I have to cut something out or I have to tailor it specific for LinkedIn. So, but anyway, that's your limitation on link on LinkedIn is 10 minutes, no more than five gigabytes in size. Usually if you got a 10 minute video, that's going to be fine. Uh, you're not going to, you're not going to run into anything there. You cannot, for those of you that are iCloud, that are uh, Apple um, iPhones, you cannot upload from the iCloud. Uh, so if you're trying to do a video on your phone and you want to load it up to LinkedIn, you can't, you can't take it directly from iCloud. You have to move it to your phone memory first, then upload it. So that's just a little trick you have to, you, you need to know when you're, um, when you're watching, uh, when you're trying to upload directly from your phone. I, I do everything from my desktop. So I do very little from my phone. Even if I'm doing, even if I record it from my phone, I'm still going to do it from my desktop because I want to bring it in and, and modify and, you know, edit and do some little touch-ups and, you know, things like that. And the other thing that's a, a, a negative with LinkedIn videos is they don't, they don't give you the uh, manual built-in captioning like YouTube does and Facebook does. By that, I mean, you know, they, they don't do the transcription. You have to upload that separately. So, and that's one of the drawbacks. LinkedIn is, does offer a live, uh, a LinkedIn live. You can go live on LinkedIn, but you have to apply. So it's not something you can do like Facebook. All you have to do is go to Facebook and go, oh, I'm going to go live and bang, I got it. I'm ready to go. LinkedIn, you got to apply. And, and as such, it's kind of tricky to apply. I mean, it, it, they have a form you fill out and you got to really, um, you have to you know, tell it where you want to go and the topics and whatever you're going to use, uh, and then let them approve it. But before you even think about going, uh, going to LinkedIn and applying for LinkedIn live, you got to have an active page with a lot of content and with videos and with a lot of engagement because they won't look at it otherwise. So keep that in mind. So if you're thinking about doing a live or getting LinkedIn live, <clears throat> make sure that you've got, that you start preparing and putting a lot of content in, uh, including videos. And, uh, one of the cool things though, is that you can broadcast live from a company page, not just your personal profile. So for example, right now, this particular video, uh, is going to Facebook live. So, uh, but it's, it's broadcasting live from my, uh, 800 business ninja marketing page. So you can do the same thing with LinkedIn. Another cool little feature. LinkedIn pages. Now I, I know you guys, uh, as those of you who have been in classes, you know, I've talked about having LinkedIn, uh, having a LinkedIn page, but there are a lot of new features that give you a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of opportunity to build raving fans about your products or your services. Uh, and, and they're kind of, you know, if you, whether you, you can be a one man show and still have a, a LinkedIn page, you need to have that LinkedIn, a LinkedIn page with all of your company information, your page, you know, your business information there. So if you don't have a company page in LinkedIn, create one, uh, very, very easy to do. Um, and I'm going to talk about two other things once you get into there in a minute. Um, Conversations kind of now can be focused more on, uh, on the public, on, you know, political, social, economic issues. Again, caveat use with caution, you know, you're, you have a good opportunity, you know, you want to show your, your, you know, what you do and your sort of your, um, your social side of things. Uh, but yet with the idea that, anything controversial, you stand the you stand the chance of, you know, blowing somebody out. So you got to walk this line very finely. 
company page. Uh, so once you have the company page, you can also, uh, you can invite people to connect with your company page. Uh, that's something new. They've, they've given you the option now to invite connections. Uh, each month, your page is given a certain number of invites. So you can invite people. Um, you can invite, uh, you know, a few people at a time. I don't know what the number is. I haven't looked at it and I need to figure out, I need to see what that number is, but, um, but it's, you know, you're, they don't roll over. So if you don't invite, so you, let's say you've got 50 invites to do, uh, to give, uh, and you don't use them all this month, they're not going to roll over next month. So you want to try to use those invites best you can. And according to LinkedIn, we've seen that once pages gain 150 followers, their, their opportunity for growth becomes exponential. So that 150 followers on your page is sort of a magic number that once you get, um, uh, that once you connect or reach that point, you, um, you have a, you know, it, it'll sort of grows exponentially. Um, then you can also add a plug into your website for LinkedIn. So are you guys having issues with my, with the audio or the video dropping out? I noticed I just, we had just lost, had a couple of people drop off. So at the same time, so I'm wondering if it's my end or yours. Um, so if you see anything, if you see anything drop in the chat, let me know. My recording is still going and I see people there just like dropping off and maybe something happened with the, there may be sunspots on the web today. Who knows? Uh, let's see here. Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Larry. Okay. So LinkedIn company page. Um, thanks, Dan. You can also, <coughs> excuse me. You can also now create post targeted updates from your company page. So you can put in, you know, you can do a post on your company page that is geared to a particular audience segment. So for example, um, if you want to target, you know, if you, if you want to target uh, a region or a location or a company size or an industry, you can create a post specifically for that. You don't have to, you know, you can, you create your post just for CEOs, CFOs, uh, just for uh, somebody that's a senior level manager, um, just for somebody in Tucson or in Arizona. So you have the option to, to create multiple, um, you know, multiple targets for just a post rather than it going to everybody. There are some, there are some, uh, stipulations. You have to have at least 300 followers to the page and then each target audience must include 300 followers. So this is really going to be geared for once you get a little bigger, uh, a little bigger following. Um, but once you have that 300 follower number, um, and assuming that the, the group you want to target has 300 or more then you can, you can put a post that goes just to that audience. The LinkedIn product page, um, you can create a product page whether you're you know, for any business. So if you think about it, you know, for me, I don't have a product, a physical product, but I do have, you know, I have a product for, for web design. I have a product for web hosting. I have a product for social media marketing. I have a product for video. So I have multiple products even though they're digital and they're services, you know, they're really services, but, but coming soon right now, it's only in software, but coming soon, they, they're going to give you the option of having a free lead generation form on your product page. So let's say that, uh, um, let's say that Dan's got uh, does computer services, you know, he's got a virus removal service. And I go to his product page in LinkedIn and I go, Ooh, that's interesting. I can click the button on his product page and it'll on the form will pre-fill with all of my information from my bio. 
so it automatically fills everything in and all they have to do is maybe probably just leave a message uh, and then click send. So it, it's, it sounds like a cool little lead generation uh, tool and I'm anxious for it to roll out, but it is again, not available for all businesses yet, but that's something coming. So watch for that this year. So I just think that's, again, I think that's kind of a cool uh, uh, coming soon type of deal. One of the things that's important is interactivity. You know, we want, we, we've got to interact with, you know, with folks and, you know, webinars, there's a, there's a, a Zoom, um, a Zoom fatigue that a lot of, you know, people have, we, we Zoom so much, you know, in the webinars that aren't, that uh, aren't really drawing the human interaction that we're really looking for. You go to, you know, you go to a webinar like this and you, you learn some information but it doesn't fulfill you from a standpoint of the interaction that you would get from going to a live event, for example, or a networking event or a live workshop um, that we used to be able to go to or conferences. So we're not really filling that need. So we have to find ways to help in, in, engage people. And, you know, people want discussions and they want panels and they want, they can ask questions rather than just sit there and, you know, at their computer and listen, they want to be able to, have some engagement. So think about how can you create that in, interaction with people? You know, maybe it's, uh, you know, maybe you, you do a webinar or, you know, something along that lines, but you, you take that then into a, a breakout rooms and let people ask questions at a later point. Uh, maybe you build a community around that based on a Facebook group or you based on a, a one of the, you know, someone, a, a LinkedIn group so that people can have, they get that social interaction that they're craving, you know, quizzes and polls are one thing you can, you know, do that it gets people engaged. So they're always looking for, you know, they, they feel like they're more than just sitting there listening. Now um, you can embed calculators into their, you know, into your site. If there's something, if that, if your business requires or uses something like that. Uh, another interactive thing is the 360 degree videos. So you can put those on to uh, YouTube or on to, uh, Facebook and, and have a panoramic view. If it's, you know, if you've got something that you're showcasing. So a lot of different ways to create that uh, interactivity, but that's really one of the things that we are really trying to, we need to be conscious of social commerce. We're moving toward, uh, you know, more and more online shopping. Not that there hasn't been plenty of that, but uh, it's really becoming easier and easier for, um, for businesses to be able to offer that uh, more features, more uh, tools, uh, easier for easier shopping. Um, Instagram allows for product tags and they easily, uh, they enable easy checkout. Facebook has got a uh, Facebook shop and they also have Facebook pay now where you can pay uh, through, you know, through Facebook. Uh, so they can you know, browse and pay right there on the spot without leaving. 54% uh, of social media users research products using social media. If you, you, if you're utilizing that and you do have a product that you're offering or service either way, why not give people the opportunity to click and to, uh, to buy right there. Don't send them to your website. Just let it happen within the, the platform. And then social media referrals can influence purchase decisions of 71% of its users. So again, we're, uh, you know, the referrals that come through social media can, uh, can really be an, in, uh, an influential uh, part of the decision-making process. Transparency and engagement. Those are the top two factors that make a brand social media best in class. In other words, businesses want, they want to know that you're, what you're about, what you stand for, and what matters to your followers. What do you, what do you feel passionate about? What do you feel like uh, that, that you are, uh, you're standing up for? And again, tricky, tricky situation, but you know, we're in a different world now. I don't know you, you guys, you know, you, you see what's happening. There's, you know, the, uh, the social justice causes and things of that nature um, can really, you know, it, to me, I've seen it both ways. I've seen businesses stand up for something that, uh, uh, you know, and come out uh, and make a stance. And 
I take it the other way. I don't, I go, okay, fine. I, I don't, I don't want your business. I don't want to do business with you. So we got, this is, this is tricky. Um, you know, because we're in a world now that doesn't accept everybody. My thoughts, if you, if my philosophy doesn't meet your philosophy, then, you know, I don't want anything to do with you. There's, there's, a, we're, we're kind of in a point right now and, and hopefully that, you know, that lessens and that kind of soothes out, smooths out. But, but right now, you know, you have to be cautious, but you got to have, you still have to showcase the fact that you're, you know, that you're engaging in what you, you know, there's some things that, that are behind the scenes, what you stand for. Quote from, uh, I believe this was from Hootsuite that said the smartest brands will understand where they fit into uh, customers' lives on social media, and they'll find creative ways of fitting into that conversation. So, you know, and these are some things that, um, these are some things that, that to think about some factors to, to think about. Um, the blue is what marketers think and the, 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 the green is what uh, consumers think. So engagement with the audience, they're pretty much equal, uh, on both factors. Uh, consumers would like, uh, more transparency than marketers do, uh, memorable content, uh, marketers think more of it than consumers, uh, distinct personality. That's about the same. Whoops. Sorry. Um, compelling storytelling marketers think that's more important than, than consumers, but strong customer service, obviously consumers think that's more important. So those are just a few factors to, to look at when you think about that best in class service. Another one of the trends is ephemeral content. And we've I've talked about that at things before, but, um, um, so ephemeral content basically means short, dur dis, uh, short duration and disappears afterwards. It's the stories aspects. It's stories on Facebook, it's stories on Instagram, and now on LinkedIn. LinkedIn also has stories now. Um, so, you know, it, it's that content that is, there's, there's a sense of urgency that, uh, that you watch the content before it goes away. And that's one of the things, what's one of the reasons it keeps gaining in popularity. Average days with stories within a month by profile size. So, you know, you'll see that the followers of with a hundred, with a uh, hundred thousand followers, you know, have, they, they do 14.4 stories per month. Um, so obviously they're seeing that that works better than uh, where some of us with less followers are, you know, four stories a month, nine stories a month, the average being 6.9. So, you know, creating those stories, <coughs> is, um, uh, is really where, you know, we, we've, if you've got to look at your, your content that you're sharing on your social media sites, um, uh, I, my recommendation is always to put more of emphasis on stories and less on the news feeds because the, the, uh, the stories are more prominent. And so for a story, for example, they outperform a photo post by, you know, by a long shot. Uh, images and stories have a 6% higher tap forward rate than videos. Okay. My, now by that, I mean, when you tap forward on a story for in, in Instagram, for example, when you tap forward on a story, that means you're skipping it. Okay. So if you've got a image, it has a higher skip rate than a video does. So the number of people moving forward to the next story before finishing it, that's why, you know, video is so important. Uh, a video story is so much more important than a, than an image post. Um, and 51% of businesses are using videos and stories now, uh, and that's increasing. So there again, another use of video. Okay. Talk about a couple of changes in Instagram. In Instagram, one of the biggest changes that's happening in Instagram is that search engine optimization drives organic, um, drives some organic reach in Instagram. 
Instagram now has, is more search friendly. So you can search a keyword uh, rather than hashtag, you can search a keyword and it's going to show relevant videos and posts. So having now being able to, to search for more content uh, in Instagram is, is going to be a huge factor. You want to make sure that you have captions, that your captions include the relevant keywords, which helps Instagram identify what's being shown. So, you know, look at the, analyze your business. What are the keywords that pertain to your business? What are the keywords people would be searching for? And make sure you have those in the caption in Instagram as keywords, because that's going to help, um, that's going to help get your site found better. Focus on posting content about your business. You know, it's nice to put, you know, fluff stuff in there, but you also want to make sure you got enough content about your business that's keyword rich and avoid content that strays into unrelated categories. Again, if you're, you know, if you're watering down your, your content with other stuff that doesn't relate to your business, then that's, that's kind of a waste. Now, obviously it helps build a relationship and people like that insight into who you are, what you do stuff, but fine, there's, there's a trade-off. So, and then follow similar accounts um, that to yours and add relevant keywords to your name in your bio. For example, you know, it could be um, uh, Gary Wagnon, uh, digital marketer or, you know, web design or something like that. So having that name in your bio uh, is a, is a, a strong spot for keywords. So you've probably, you've probably heard about TikTok. TikTok is the short, um, kind of the lip sync type um, video. They're 15 seconds in length or 15, 20 seconds in length. Well, Instagram has a version of that now that's called Reels. Um, and it's content delivered in 15 to 30 seconds. Um, it creates quick attention grabbing moments in a creative and an entertaining way. So again, it's that entertainment factor. This is, you know, if you're, if you're targeting um, younger crowd, the Gen X and Ys, take, you know, it, it Reels is probably the way to go. Although a lot of folks are, you know, a lot of folks in the older bracket are beginning to pick up on it as well, uh, the TikTok and Reels. But it's a huge thing. Instagram is putting a lot of emphasis on it. Uh, and as such, you know, it's, it's, it's the competitor to TikTok, so it's it's something we might have to look at from a standpoint of what can we create that fits into that category, and it's kind of like Instagram Stories on steroids. So uh, you can add music and text to keep things interesting, and then it also has a green screen effect that gives you the ability to share posts or screenshots or videos in the reel. So you can actually put a green screen in there and put photos of your you know pictures of your uh, service that you offer, special graphics that you want to show, showcase, you can do that through a green screen in Reels. So got a lot of uh, cool little features to it. Another thing they're inter that they're launching is called Instagram Guides. And it's really a single resource around specific topic or products. Uh, so you can actually take your content uh, group and gather your own Instagram content and put it together in a guide and then uh, individual albums or a group or a content collected into a single resource. So you have that available for people to see uh, through your Instagram, uh, through Instagram. So again, another cool thing that they've added. New platforms and browsers, a lot of talk about privacy, a lot of talk about, you know, the aspect of limiting uh, what people can share uh, from a security standpoint. If you're interested in looking for a browser that's not being tracked uh, from a standpoint of ads, uh, then there's a couple of them. You can use Brave uh, or DuckDuckGo. Both of those are, um, DuckDuckGo has grown like a billion followers, literally a billion uh, users in the last uh, 90 days or something like that. It's literally, literally exploded because it's privacy and no tracking. So they don't follow you with every, everywhere you go on the web. 
and then there's, you know, there are new platforms from social media standpoint. There's a kind of a, a platform called MeWe that's a answer to Facebook. Um, there's Rumble, which is sort of a, another alternative to uh, Google's own uh, YouTube. Telegram, which is sort of a, along the lines of um, Twitter. Uh, all of those have, you know, multiple uh, uses and you're able to post stuff that's not filtered or, you know, as, um, or, you know, are things that are censored out. So new platforms just to consider. Voice search, uh, just a few stats on voice search. 50% of users search to find a local business. 74% of voice search users look for local businesses weekly. And, you know, it's, it's faster and easier. The reason we like the voice search aspect, the, you know, the Alexas and the series and people like that is because number one, it's faster and easier. Uh, it's more appropriate and convenient to find things ideal for mobile use and the maximum volume requests consist of near me. So people are looking for what's around them in, um, in terms of their voice search. So we have to think about how we utilize and, and gear our business to be, uh, to fit into a voice search mode. And there's a lot of strategies for that. So, and I'll do that on a future webinar, but, uh, uh, just be thinking about how that fits into play with, uh, with the things you're doing and, you know, you're able to, prom uh, prompt into the point with rich snippets. So that those are what gets read in, in, in uh, voice search. User generated content. This is one of those things where you're really encouraging your audience to share content on your sites, on your platforms. You do that by encouraging them to you know, create either testimonials or maybe you give them an incentive or a discount. If they, you know, if they post a video of them using your service or talking about your product or giving you a video testimonial, uh, donations, you'll, you'll make a donation for anyone that does something on your sites. So having that, um, you know, giving them a reason to take that step and, and doing something for you is important. They can post a photo, they can do a testimonial or a story. Those are great to have. Long form content. <clears throat> By that, I'm talking about blog posts and really the, the real key now is 3000 plus words in, in a, in a blog article, Google likes more content. Uh, that spends these you people spend more time on the page when they're reading those articles, it decreases the bounce rate. So the longer somebody stays on the page, <clears throat> the lower your, uh, your bounce rate is of people, <clears throat> excuse me, dropping off and going someplace else, going to another page. You know, it creates more backlinks and shares. So you get more traffic and really you, you're, you know, the whole thing is it, it lives longer, gives you more lifetime uh, for your blog article. So ultimately the biggest thing is it's a higher Google ranking. So they really like that extra content. And that's really a focus that, a, you know, a lot of people are beginning to look at is how do we create that longer, longer content. And then lastly, I want just a couple of things. I just want to mention uh, some new marketing uh, terminology are really stances, if you will, conversational marketing sales are no longer the top priority for customers. Instead, it's information engagement. It's social issues that are driving the engagement and retention. What are you doing? <clears throat> what conversations are you having with your audience, <clears throat> with your customers or clients? Not what are you selling them, but what conversations are you having? What are you talking about? What are you, uh, you know, wanting to know about their needs and wants? So conversational marketing is one thing we need to look at. Uh, another is nostalgia marketing. You know, remember the good old days. You know, we remember when we didn't have to, you know, we, we could go face to face with people, you know, so we, you, you want to think about, you know, you make people feel good by, uh, you know, by taking them back to a, a you know, a kinder, gentler time, if you will. So that's another marketing strategy that people are beginning to explore and utilize. Same way socially conscious and conscious marketing, which we've talked about. And then old school marketing. Believe it or not, 
newsletters, podcasts, even phone calls rather than texts are, uh, are really um, seeing a, a stronger popularity now because again, we've got the personal touch. So those are just a few of the, 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 you know, different types of marketing where, where you can experiment with to find out what works best for your business. So I guess the question is then where do you start? And, and that's, you know, that's the, the, really the, um, you know, there's so much information going on. There's so much that we're, that we're, um, getting flooded with on a daily basis. How do you keep up with it? And, and so as a result, one of the things that uh, I've been doing and a couple of you guys, and some of you guys know, uh, know more about what kind of what I'm, what I'm doing, but one of the things that I've, uh, that I do is I'm, I've got my 90 day novice to ninja program and I'm just finishing up the first version of that, uh, with a group, um, and this, so I'm going to start that program up again. And it's really designed to be a weekly webinar to cover all the different topics that we've covered today. So we're going to have different stuff each week, uh, that will help you stay abreast of what's happening in the world. Uh, how does it affect your marketing? What do you need to do to get your marketing on track rather than weed through a million different things and try this and try that and throw something at the wall and hope it sticks. Then we're going to really look a deep dive into a different topic. So, um, it's on, we have the content on demand. So all the webinars are recorded, uh, and there's step-by-step -step trainings and a lot of them that are available in the membership section of a website. Uh, we've got a Facebook group that accesses. So there's a lot of things that we have to offer. Uh, so if you guys are interested and want to find out more, uh, I definitely encourage you to look at the 90 day novice to ninja.com. Uh, you can sign up there. If you want to be a part, I'm going to start the next series. will probably start uh, next week. Um, and so if you want to take a look at the, you know, take a look at, at 90 day novice to ninja.com right here on the bottom. Check that out. And if you're interested, uh, give me a call. If you got questions and feel free to, uh, feel free to uh, get in touch with me and I'll be glad to kind of walk you through that, um, what's available. So I know I throw a lot of stuff at you today. I know there was a lot of information there. Hopefully you'll find those things were, were helpful and, uh, and you'll find some things that are kind of give you food for thought. So how do you build your marketing plan from there? Uh, if anyone has any questions, feel free to message me or you can drop them in the chat. I'll, I'll monitor that or, uh, feel free to email me and we will, um, get to those. I'll get back with you with any answers you might have or questions you might have. <clears throat> so anyone have any questions? I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream here. All right. Well then thank you guys for coming. Um, look forward to hopefully some of you that, uh, I know, I know a couple that have been in the, that in, in my, uh, novice to ninja program, but uh, hopefully you guys, some of you guys will take a look at that and see the value of what, what that has to offer. Um, and look forward to seeing you there. So thank you guys for coming. Feel free to sh watch for the replay on, uh, I'll send out a link for the replay and I'll also send out a, um, uh, I'll also send out on the, the link to the Facebook uh, live as well. Uh, let's see here, I stop record. Uh, <clears throat> all right, thank you guys. We will talk to you guys uh, down the road. <laughs>